Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad. My name is Austin. And my name is Patrick. And thank you guys for joining the show. Make sure you enjoy our new intro. Yeah, we got APT and PAT. They talking about young Americans overseas. We got McKinney, Pulisic, Raina, and Des. Got that red, white, and blue. USA on the crest from England, Germany, from Belgium to Spain. Racking up all the medals on the trophy train. Got one thing on their mind. We're scaling some love. One day we can say we will win the World Cup. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed that. That's our new intro. We've been waiting to debut for some time now, and uh, it's really fitting, right, Pat? Uh, we, you know, are debuting it right after Thanksgiving, and we got to say thank you to a few people who actually helped us put it together. Yeah, perfect segue. You know, thank you, Ashley Buckley. Um, made our all of our imagination, right? Everything come to life in that video. She did a fantastic job. Um, you know, really capturing, you know, what we wanted with the visual effects and obviously with the music, right? Um, that was our friend Brandon Panetta and Brandon Carey, uh, their group there. Um, again, you know, we'll have to check out and, and throw all the socials there, um, you know, on the YouTube video there. But everyone did a tremendous job. So we have to give thanks, right, Austin, for, for all of our friends um, during the, this time, you know, in Thanksgiving time and also for our Americans abroad and overseas performing pretty well. Yeah, it was a really fun week to kind of follow along, right? We had some big, uh, you know, clashes in Champions League midweek. You know, we had Wes McKinney versus Christian Pulisic, Brendan Aronson versus Tim Weah. And then this weekend, we had some other, you know, really good matchups, right? We saw Christian Pulisic take on uh, Man United. Uh, we also had, you know, Gianluca Busio, Tanner Tessman versus Inter. So a lot of good games this week. And uh, like you said, we have to give thanks to our boys playing overseas. And also, you know, thank you to our loyal fan base for uh, for sticking with us. So. Yeah, that's definitely important, especially for the Yah fan base here. So, um, yeah, really excited. And I think you also had a perfect segue there. You know, the first player we're going to talk about um, today is Christian Pulisic. So it's really nice to see um and hear his name right you know back on our list here um you know back on social media you know playing um you know in and out here um you know injury free i'm knocking on some wood here <laughs> but nonetheless <laughs> we're gonna start back with that uh champions league clash against uh weston mckinney and juventus there um where chelsea put on a thrashing a 4-0 win um, clearly uh gulfs there between the two right in, in terms of class and skill yeah. it's pretty unbelievable um you know unfortunately for for weston side but nonetheless um Pulisic did play and start 70 minutes there in a false nine role which is interesting right in that center forward type of role where he had only about 20 touches or so on the day so really uh bonucci in that juventus defense um was pretty strong or pretty solid in eliminating Pulisic's threat, you know, in terms of uh, bullying him off the ball a little bit more, you know, physicality there with the lit um, as well. So it was pretty tough for him to get completely involved and obviously not a position that he's playing all the time, but nonetheless, awesome to see him get game time, open up space for a lot of others in Chelsea's lethal attack, right? So if you eliminate Pulisic or another guy, you know, you have Ziyech there starting, Cho did pretty well. And then, even some of the wing backs, right, with uh, Reese James is playing phenomenally right now, um, getting a lot yeah. of chances there and, and obviously making an impact with the goals. So I think all of the goal scorers, except for Timo Werner there, where uh, Chelsea Academy graduates, um, you know, Chaloba there, Reese James, and then um, Hudson Odoi. So yeah, it was, it was awesome to see at least Christian get game time. Um, maybe not the impact we'd like to see on the score sheet but awesome um you know more minutes right that's all i can say yeah and i thought he looked good in the game time he got um he did have an opportunity to kind of score um he was kind of in one-on-one -on -one versus the goalkeeper and uh kind of just you know messed up the the, yeah. the chance in the final third there but uh other than that you know it was yeah it was a pretty uh i would say kind of above average day um i thought he did a good job you know just uh, again, making runs in and around the box, um, you know, showing for, for players and, and kind of combining with players too, uh, again, in that final third in a role where he really hasn't played too much, right? You know, we've seen him in the number 10 role for the U.S., um, even, you know, from time to time at Chelsea. Uh, we've seen him obviously a lot more out on the wing. So this was definitely kind of a new position for him, 
and uh, you know, an experiment that that I'm kind of interested to see where it goes. Right? Like, is this something that uh, you know Thomas Tuchel continues to try with him, or was just just you know just kind of a one off thing? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. That, that's definitely the biggest question. And I think that just speaks to his versatility and, and who he is as a player and, and how Tuchel values him and just the Chelsea staff because and he's playing everywhere. Um, and, and this kind of seg- uh, segues perfectly into the game over the weekend where Pulisic did sub on later in the second half in a right wing back type of role, um, but pretty much played in the right wing, uh, more up front there just because they needed something. Uh, they did draw against Man United um, and just reading kind of the brutal – you know, headlines there over in London and, and Chelsea pretty much losing out to Chelsea themselves. And then Man United was the bystander. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, yeah, they kind of looked toothless there. And then obviously some costly areas with Jorginho. Um, but yeah, it just looked like when Pulsa came on, it was a little bit too late um, that Tuchel made the changes, but he was slicing Man U defenders. I think he made Ronaldo fall over in some of the highlights. So, of course, we had to capture that, right? Some of the, the American <laughs> fans. But, yeah, again, Austin, like you said, just the combination that he had, um, his dribbling, right, just being able to take players on, and especially um, when a lot of those Man United players were fatigued at the end, you know, having him come in and just change the game and, and get a few, I think he had two or three goal-scoring chances created there with his attacking prowess, dribbling, his skill, right, is definitely a huge asset to Chelsea. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to, to see, you know, what Tuchel does because Timo Werner, again, struggled. He started, did, did not really essentially nothing, not to be, a, you know, harsh and biased from an American perspective, but um, it'll be very interesting because obviously now you have Mount coming back from injury, Lukaku, who's been out for a month or so, right? Um, there's just a lot that, that the Chelsea attack has to offer, but um, it seems like just with this run of games now, the, that Premier League standing is so tight. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of costly. You know, if, if, if Timo or some players aren't performing, then they're going to be yanked from the lineup. And this is a huge opportunity for Pulisic to, you know, cement his, his uh, you know, spot back in that starting eleven. Yeah, and I really think he's playing um, in good form, too. Uh, You know, in that game against Man United, he looked kind of like his old self, right? Like he was very confident, uh, very calm on the ball, uh, was really, you know, thinking through his decision making. And um, I just liked what he what he provided in this game. I don't think it was anything again that was like super crazy. But um, I I think it was just, you know, again, coming back from injury, uh, getting his his feet under him again in the Premier League and, and getting that confidence up. And I think you're really starting to see see that again, which is, you know, exciting. I think that could lead to, you know, even better play and a better run of form from him, from him. So, um, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see kind of these next few weeks before the, the holiday break, um, you know, and kind of see if he can, again, score some goals, you know, provide some assists and, uh, again, kind of carry that good run of form into, uh, into January and into, you know, some, some important world cup qualifiers, right? Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Um, And that's the, yeah, that's the key. Just staying healthy. I mean, we want him to, again, of course, start as many games as he can and, and get minutes. But um, I'm kind of okay, you know, with maybe obviously the Champions League, the heavy rotation with cup games, the Premier League, that maybe he is, you know, 50, 60 percent of the time starting the other, you know, 40 percent. Right. Maybe playing last 20, 25 is that high impact sub. Uh, again, of course, I want to see him starting, but he has shown, you know, time and time again, coming back from injuries or, or these unfortunately reoccurring you know situations where he's been out for his Chelsea um you know career right at Chelsea uh where he's come into these substitute roles and has made a huge difference in the last 15 20 minutes of game so honestly I will take that and if we can right fingers crossed qualify for the world cup a healthy Pulisic um you know riding into the next uh, you know the, the the new year in 2022 is all we can really you know hope for and ask for as fans yeah, and you're you're not kidding too with the amount of games Chelsea play. Um, you know they play a game midweek here against Watford, um, and then over the weekend they actually play West Ham. Um, so again, that's wow. You know, those are what? two Premier League too. Yeah, two Premier wow. League games. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mean they're you know they're gonna have a lot of games. Obviously, you know the Premier League plays games around Boxing Day. Um, you know as we know from from the past and and things like yep. that. So this is like you said, Pat. You know a very uh. I guess, uh, clumped time, uh, for, for games to happen. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's 
good to see him back healthy again. Um, and I, you know, again, I hope Thomas Tuchel uses, uh, you know, thinks wisely, I guess, when he selects Christian Pulisic for these games and, and doesn't overwork them um, and, and keeps them healthy. That's that's yeah. the most important thing. So, and, and I don't want to drag too much on. I just had one quick thing. Sure. To say. Yeah. With Lukaku coming back, I would love to see him maybe dropped under Lukaku. Ooh, um, okay. The formation. I think that'd be very interesting. Just the way that Pulisic can open up spaces, his one-two quick combinations. I think. That would be very intriguing because he did have a nice connection with Giroud and a player like that. And yeah. I think that'd be very intriguing to see um, if Tuchel does that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, he really did look good when Giroud was on the field um, and a target man specifically, right? Like a, a poacher type right. um, striker is is really what it looks like, you know, Christian plus or it looks like that's when Christian plus like thrives the most. Um, and, and yeah, Lukaku is, you know, every bit of that. So yeah, yeah. I think playing him under, uh, you know, Lukaku would be really, really interesting. Um, so now we're going to move on to our next player for today and a player that was on the losing end of that champions league tie, uh, you know, midweek and that's Weston McKinney. Uh, so Weston again in that game started and played 90 minutes. Uh, and I really thought he did a decent job in this game. You know, he wasn't, uh, you know, I think he created maybe one chance in this game. Um, you, you know, Juventus as a whole just look very uh, kind of out of rhythm, out of sync. And I really just thought Wes McKinney on the day provided them with a spark um, that they were, you know, looking for. I think he was one of the only players that really uh, was doing bright things, getting forward with the ball, um, you know, making good decisions in the final third. Um, and, and, you know, again, creating some opportunities. Now, none of those opportunities paid off on this day. But uh, I just like how Weston is, you know, not letting the the bad run of form seem to affect him. Um, I, I really think Weston's playing uh, up to a high level right now, even though, again, they're not getting good results. And um, yeah, yeah, it, it kind of sucks, right? <laughs> it yeah. sucks to watch one of our players kind of go through uh, another rough time at a, at a club. But that's kind of where Juventus are at right now. So uh, yeah, yeah, you know, 4-0 loss in this game. Uh, they are still in second place in their uh, Champions League group, uh, you know, tied with Chelsea on 12 points, uh, second on goal differential. Uh, and it looks like they're going to, you know, get through uh, to the knockout round. I, I think they're secured for the knockout round. I think they've got 12 points and the third place team has four. So, I, you know, I think there's one more round of Champions League games. So, uh, yeah, you know, at the at the very least, not the result on this day, but – uh, they will be moving on to the knockout round. So, uh, you know, I guess that's half the job done, right? That's that's kind of a, a small win on their, their brutal oh, yeah. season so far. But, uh, yeah, yeah, what do you think, Pat? You think uh, th- they can go kind of far in, in the knockout <laughs> round? Or are they, I, is there I, I unfortunately think it stops short in the round of 16. Um, oh, okay. Pretty harsh. I'm going to be pretty harsh. Right but... in the round of 16. You're not even going to give them the win? Yeah, I I think with finishing second and, and just seeing the other groups, you know, who's at the top, um, I think it might be a, That's a tall task. Um, I'd love to see him get to the next round, um, but that would be the farthest I would have them to, you know, worst case, maybe just out in the round of 16 then best case that next round to get to. Um, obviously with their standing in Syria, uh, it's just brutal right now. You know, it's a tough time of transition for them, but um, I think you point out something very key is, is Weston has been picking up form, um, you know, playing very well, you know, providing that energy and spark. You can see it when you're watching the games, you know, clearly, um, you know, giving it his all and also, you know, not only just the effort, but you're seeing kind of the, um, you know, the the assists or chances created and, and, and you know, crosses and um, successful dribbles and tackles, right? You're seeing the statistics show up as well and prove his case. So, being part of this transition um, as they go in and, 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 you know, it's Juventus, they will acquire and change up their, their team, you know, like Barcelona and, and the death situation. I think Weston's playing himself into a really good spot to be there for that, you know, that future, you know, when they are back in that, that first or second place, you know, a few years back, right. Um, thinking would Weston fit into that team, you know, just, just kind of thinking about that and the players that they had before, all this transition happened. I think he's setting himself up for a very, very good spot in the future. Yeah. And I think at the very least, uh, and this is from some reports we're hearing out of, out of Italy and Turin uh, that, you know, Juventus see him as an asset that they could potentially transfer as well and and make some money. So 
whether uh, he stays there and is kind of a centerpiece of their rebuild or uh, is, you know, on the move and uh, goes for some significant money to a, you know, a team that's in maybe a better position than Juventus right now. Um, I think he's, you know, putting himself in a good position, uh, you know, post his time there or, or, you know, post the season, maybe that's the best way to say it. Um, and, and I really think, again, you said, you know, he's playing well right now uh, and Juventus are not. This weekend, he played 64 minutes before coming off with an, with an injury, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and this was in Juve's 1-0 loss to Atalanta. So Atalanta is a good team, right? Top four right now um, in Serie A. Uh, but Weston created four chances on the day uh, and really looked, you know, dangerous at times in this game. Had a really nice pass uh, to kind of seal a, a Juventus, you know, attacker in on goal, uh, which unfortunately, you know, the chance wasn't converted. But uh, again, was really doing, you know, good work uh, on the day and, and kind of, again, being that catalyst for this team. Uh, and again, it just doesn't, you know, didn't work out on the day, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, certainly tough. I mean, you can only do so much, right, Austin, um, especially in this case, in the scenario. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, they just don't have, have much, you know, going forward, to, to be honest, and, and not to be too critical of Murata. And I think, um, you know, some of their players, like Kiesa is a very bright talent who's going to, I I think he's going to probably leave, um, unfortunately, for a very, very high value in the near future. But Kiesa is a workman, too. Like, he, he's not workman. he's not the most, ta- like, I hate to say talented, but he's not the most, like, skillful, maybe is the right word. But he, he puts his head down, right? He gets forward. He kind of gets by players. He's determined, I would say, as a player. Um and yeah, I I don't know. It, it's it's so like funny. Italian grit. He's just he's just like a true yeah. Italian he's like grit. one of the old players, right? On that like you know Italy team from two thousand six. Yeah. He'd fit right in, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a really good point. So yeah, I don't know, man. It's it's just it, it it's so tough, you know. They're Atlanta, like you said, is a very solid team, but oh, they're in a very scary spot. And I I think back to what you said, you know, maybe it's, I think Tottenham rumors or West Ham or some of the Premier League where maybe he go for high, high sum in, in playing Europa Champions League. I, I would be very, very worried right now for Juventus to, to get that top four spot. Although I think it's fairly close to that fifth place, but they're, they're, they're treading some, some, what, what's the right word? You know, that, that phrase I'm trying to say, they're, they're treading some treading some, water, yeah, they're treading water, <laughs> treading water. Yeah. I mean, they sit in seventh right now on 21 points, which is just outside of that Europa league position. Um, 21 points is tied with sixth place. Uh, so, you know, it's really on goal differential again. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not been a great, you know, start to the season, obviously, as we've documented so far uh, this year, but What's, what's really just disappointing is, um, you know, Juventus had so much possession in this game uh, against Atalanta, and it just seemed like Atalanta had this confidence against them, right? Uh, and we've kind of talked about it before, too, so don't want to belabor the point, but that that elite status of, of Juve just seems to be kind of lost right now. Uh, there's not that air of, you know, confidence that they're playing with um, and, and that, you know, confidence that affects teams when they come to play them like a Bayern has, right? Bayern plays with that supreme confidence. Teams are always rattled when they go there, um, unless they're Bruce Schumann and Gladbach. And, uh, <laughs> you know, then they're just, you know, it's the opposite for some reason. But uh, no, it just seems like they've really just lost that you know, some of that chemistry maybe. Um, and that's led to them losing confidence in themselves and teams really capitalizing on that because you really saw Atalanta, uh, you know, just take it to Juve when they, when they made mistakes, right. You know, Matias Delict gave the ball away a lot in this game. Uh, and Atalanta was right there to kind of punish them and uh, get forward. And, and again, that's how they scored their goal. So yeah. yeah, it's just, it's just kind of brutal watching them, them play. Um, and again, watching Weston be a part of it, you know, it's, yeah. it's really like, the Barca, you know, collapse last year. Uh, it feels like we're watching that kind of again with Juve this year. So, uh, and I guess Barca again this year is not doing so hot too. So maybe they're both in the same exact situation. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's all for Weston this week. So we're going to throw it back to you, Pat, for a player that made a transfer. This yeah, week. right. Definitely. Yeah, I want to talk about the player that made a transfer and just remind me. Maybe they need to bring like uh, do you need to bring Pirlo, you know, back as that Danny Alves role. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. 
yeah. <laughs> maybe they'll that. they'll poach Danny Alves for his uh, yeah, right? you know his uh, what's it called his release clause, right? His hundred yeah, right? million dollar release clause. They'll pay for exactly. It. But yeah, sorry to um, you know I digress there. But yeah, an interesting player um, with Kyle Duncan, um, who is going to uh, the Belgian Pro League to uh, KV Ostend. Uh, which they announced here, uh, the signing on a free transfer through 2025, where he's been a, a regular starter for the New York Red Bulls and has had a successful time in the MLS. So obviously the right back uh, originally signed in 2018 after spending two years in France with FC uh, Valenciennes there. Um, but since he's come, like I said, you know, 55 of the 72 MLS appearances with the Red Bulls, um, appearing in all the regular season contest there. And last year, I think he missed just two in this past league campaign. So he's really made a huge impact. Um, and one of their, their, I guess, staple heads right there, um, consistent figures with the, the back line. So yeah, Duncan does join, uh, you know, a team there in Belgium, Austin that sits 13th, uh, which isn't great because they had that fifth place finish about a year ago. Um, but maybe he can help turn things around. And I think, again, 24, um, it's still a pretty solid move abroad. Uh, we're seeing a lot of other players, you know, Tejan Buchanan move over to Bruges. Um, you're seeing, obviously, you know, um, a lot of other players, you know, Chris Durkin, uh, Mark McKenzie, um, way back when, Kenny Seth, right? Um, <laughs> a lot of players have come in around or are currently in Belgium. So I think this is a pretty solid move. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I... I like him moving abroad in general. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, Usten's a team, right, that kind of sits mid-table usually in Belgium. Uh, you know, they finished in fifth, like you said, uh, a year ago, which was a good finish for them. But usually they're hovering right around that, like, seventh, yeah. eighth position. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I, – I, I, I don't know. I, I think he wanted to go abroad, right, and wanted to – find a team where he'll play at. So this is the best option for him right now. And I really like Kyle Duncan. Um, I've always been, been kind of a, a, a fan of his game. You know, he's someone who is very athletic, uh, has good speed, uh, is really just all around a good fullback. Uh, he has a little bit of everything you want from a fullback, right? He can get forward. He can get back and defend. He's got a little bit of grittiness to him. Um, he's still, like you said, relatively young. So we'll, we'll kind of see what, what to make of this and, and what happens. But uh, again, he's been a player that's been kind of in and around the USMNT, uh, you know, camps as well, right? He's had a few call-ups. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's a, a good move for him based on what he wants, which was to, to go abroad. And now it's on him, kind of like with, with some of the other players we've seen move abroad recently. Like, you know, Sam Vines maybe is another good example. Going to a, a league yeah, where right. you're going to have to, you know, grind and kind of prove yourself. And Sam Vines is, is doing that right now, right? Getting consistent starts for uh, Royal Antwerp there um, in the same league. And um, yeah, yeah, we'll kind of see what, what happens with Kyle. Also the nephew of, of George Weah, right? And the cousin of Tim Weah. So he's got that, uh, you know, got that, that good soccer DNA. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, that's a fun fact. I didn't know. But yeah, yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, I, I certainly like to move, like you said, just to highlight some of the skills, right? And we talk about his... Um, you know, why maybe, you know, the, the, some of those teams in Europe were looking at him um, in terms of his defending. Um, I think he had the second most tackles completed there. Uh, really strong uh, defender as well going back, which is obviously important. And then in the modern fullback type of, you know, role where he's even progressed into that right wing back or midfield type of capacity before. Um, and you see some of his games, right? He's very, uh, you know, creative in terms of his his dribbling, you know, moving forward there. Um, you know, getting into that final third, um, you know, having a few of those goals and assists, making impacts there, uh, getting the chances created. He has the technical skill and aptitude to really do well, um, I think, in Belgium. Like you said, you know, he wanted to test himself here. And now that the key test is, you know, some of the players going abroad kind of um, fall into, creep into anonymity, if I'm, you know, that's a tongue twister there. So correct <laughs> me there. Sorry, fans. But you know what I mean? You kind of just kind of blend into the crowd sometimes where um, I think this is a player, again, that will be in a unique situation and maybe look to ideally, you know, in the next two or three years in that 27, 28 age to be able to go to maybe 
um, move on to an Anderlecht or, or a, you know, top one or two team in Belgium or maybe take that next step up. But this is a great springboard for him as he has been somebody in and around camps that really wants to make an impact here for maybe the, uh, um, you know, when we host the World Cup. Yeah, and I, I really think it's a big loss for the Red Bulls too. He's been such a yeah, consistent player for them. Um, again, he's really proved himself in MLS, you know, coming in, as you said, from that uh, team in France is kind of just, you know, a free agent, right? That's that's how he was signed. And, um, you know, people didn't really expect too much of him when he came in. And, you know, by the end of his time here this year, he was an, undis- you know, undoubted starter. And again, one of the top, uh, again, right backs in, in MLS this year. So, uh, yeah, I think he's, he's a player that has a really bright future and just is one of those players that is always going to work hard at his game, um, which is also a really underrated attribute. So, yeah, I'm just excited to kind of see you know, where this move takes him. If he's really passionate about playing overseas and, and getting back, um, you know, maybe into the French league, right? Ligue maybe, maybe making a move there. Since he has some ties. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for it. So yeah, I'm excited to, to see, see how it plays out. So I think with that, we're going to move on to our next player for today and that's Uli Yanez. So uh, Uli this weekend scored a goal, a uh, game winning goal for his team, SKN St. Poulton over there in Austria uh, in their 1-0 win over Rapid Wien, uh, their reserve team, excuse me, not their first team, their reserve right, team. Right, right. So again, you know, just to give you guys some more uh, background, um, if you don't remember, but Ulian is right now is on loan from Wolfsburg uh, in the Austrian second division. Uh, and that's, again, SKN St. Poulton is his team. That's the team uh, Taylor Booth went on loan to last year when they were in the first division there in Austria. And uh, this year he has three goals, one assist in 13 games. Uh, and really he started to to kind of score more of those goals recently here. So uh, I, I would say all in all, Pat, this loan's going okay. Uh, obviously it's not a very high level, which is a little concerning. But uh, Uli's gotten game time this year, right? Consistent game time um, against some professional teams and, and some professional minutes. And, uh, you know, has, has, again, started to score a little bit more here. Uh, I don't think it's... You know, again, the level that we want him to be playing at, but I think right now, uh, in the situation he's been dealt, I think it's good to see him getting game time and, and scoring yeah. goals. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And just coming back again from pretty brutal injuries there, and, and just uh, um, you know, getting some game time, you know, under his feet is, is really important. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of you know where he goes from here. But just a quick comparison, it seems like the same Fulton team, right? Very similar to, um, you know, where, where Andrea and some of the other players at Telstar, you know, taking a lot of players on loan kind of in that second division. Um, just kind of an interesting, um, you know, random correlation I thought of there. Um, completely random, but nonetheless, um, <laughs> it's great to see on as a player of such skill. Um, you know, really, really catch some eyes, you know, whether it is in Europe or other leagues, right, Austin? Yeah, and I'm not exactly sure what the best move for him is post this season. Uh, we don't think he's going to stay, obviously, in Austria. Uh, I, I, at least I don't foresee that. Uh, I don't think he's going to you know, stay at Wolfsburg. I wouldn't be shocked if they kind of just released him this summer. Uh, so really, you know, his, his options are kind of limited, right? Didn't have a great loan last year to, to Heronveen for whatever reason that was. It sounded like there were some personal things that he was going through. Um, and, and just didn't really mesh with the team there. So, uh, unfortunately, you know, I'm not sure, uh, his stock's very high in the air which again, based on, on what we thought of him going into that loan, we really thought that that, that league was a great league for him to develop in. Uh, so we'll see, you know, I don't want to rule anything out, but part of me thinks, and, and maybe this is me, uh, you know, feeding into the, the, the Twitter banter, like the Twitter, uh, you know, community and, and kind Let's of suggestions out there. But part of me, part of me thinks that, uh, you know, moving back to MLS and I'm not saying the LA galaxy, but I'm saying a team in MLS that kind of values him and his skill set. Uh, I don't think it would be such a bad, bad option for him, you know, even as early as next summer. Um, he's 20 years old right now. Uh, this summer he'll be 21. So yeah, I, I think he's got a lot of talent, right? We've seen it from him. We, we've seen, you know, the type of player he is and, uh, when he's in good form, you know, he's a really tricky player and crafty player. So if he goes to a team, uh, that, that can value his skill set and really give him an opportunity, uh, uh, you know, a team in MLS, then, then I think that would be, that'd be a good move for him personally. I kind of like that. Yeah. I, I kind of like that too. Um, and there are some unique and interesting MLS teams, right? Uh, obviously the level has gotten significantly higher, 
Um, and I'm just curious to get your take. Maybe even again, I don't, I'll be honest. I don't follow too much in terms of, you know, FC Dallas and where they're at and some of the other teams, but would he fit in? Would, would maybe a Dallas bring him in and, and play? I know it's a different situation right now, but <laughs> yeah. be kind of seeing the connections he had, you know, with Pepe and then obviously there's Jesus Frere and company there, but uh, maybe even that or like, uh, you know, being under the tutelage of, of Jim Curtin there in, in the union. Um, I really like him as a coach. I don't know if that would fit the system. Um, the union, again, being biased, but <laughs> I'm just trying to think of some teams. I, I really do like him. Um, you know, going back to, to MLS and and maybe even, uh, you know, Liga Mekis. But I think the MLS is a better option. Yeah, I, I don't know if FC Dallas or, or even the Union would really, you know, take them in. It's just kind of not the type of move that they've done in the past. Not going to say it wouldn't happen, but uh, yeah, it would be cool to kind of see him in those two different environments. Um, you know, a team that kind of stands out to me based on, you know, what they're trying to build um, would be like, you know, Austin FC maybe, um, you know, would try and bring him in and, and really use him to kind of, again, you know, pro provide their team with a spark and, and someone that's a, a name to kind of sell their people and, and maybe he fits in with, with what they want to do. Um, I don't know if that would be the best situation for him as a player, but I definitely think they would be a team that could be interested in him. Um, you know, maybe a team like Columbus, if they really wanted to Again, right. you know, assert their dominance or, you know, they have a pretty deep team right now. I really enjoy, you know, watching them play. So maybe they uh, kind of, you know, take the lead on him. NYCFC has been known to kind of sign some players, right? Like Gideon Zalalem uh, went there. So uh, oh there's gosh, definitely – the past. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely teams that would be interested in him. Um, and I think it's just up to him, again, to kind of find the right team and fit that makes the most sense for him. I think that's got to be – his number one goal this year, uh, this summer, is to kind of find what he wants. Uh, you know, find a coach that that really trusts in him and believes in him, and find a situation that he feels comfortable in. Uh, and that's again why I think MLS may make the most sense because he's closer to home a little bit. Uh, if that's something that really you know resonates with him right now. Um, and again, I think you know, coaches in in America um, and and teams in America value him maybe a little bit more than some teams. Uh, over in Europe based on, you know, what they've seen of him, what they've heard of him, um, and also just, you know, again, knowing him, right, uh, him as a known commodity. So, yeah, yeah, that's just kind of my take. Wanted to throw that out there um, after, you know, he had a, a good game this weekend and uh, really provided a, a good moment for his team. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll move on now to our final player for today, Pat. And uh, who is that? Yeah, so the final player we have is Conrad De La Fuente. So we'll recap back in the Europa League there where he came on the last 27 minutes um, in a 4-2 loss to uh, Galatasaray there in Yedlin. So um, Conrad did make an impact a little bit too late, right, to change the result. But he had a really nice assist, um, kind of isolated one-on-one -on -one the left flank there and had a nice cross, um, I think, to his right foot, deflected off a defender, but nonetheless – um, you know, the attacker there slotted it home um, for Marseille. So uh, great to see an assist, right? Um, you know, add another one to the, the stat sheet. But, yeah, I think uh, it's just awesome to see him back on the the team here, you know, getting minutes as a substitute starter, you know, a segue into this past weekend where he started and played 69 minutes in a 1-0 win um, for Marseille. So, yeah, obviously there was a there's a period where he was kind of falling out of favor, right? And out of touch there. Um, you know, missing some of the USMNT call-ups, you know, some of the fans here, right? A little bit irate. Um, but mm -hmm. really playing his way back in to Marseille, you know, putting his head down. Seems like he's really grinding in the training pitch and uh starting to make a, a little bit more of an impact, which again, you know, something that we've um been articulating week in and week out here and just improving in the final third, becoming a little bit more clinical. Um, especially at this higher level where, you know, there might be a string of few games and then um, here comes somebody right behind you to take your place. So there's a lot of competition on that team. Yeah. And Marseille's had kind of a, a, a crazy year, right? They've, they've been involved in a lot of like on the field uh, incidents where, where players have, um, or well, fans, I really have started those, those incidents and, um, you know, players have gotten involved in certain situations and uh, it's really been kind of a, a disappointing year, I guess, uh, in Lagoon from from that standpoint. So it's kind of been weird seeing Conrad 
you know, in the middle of some of those situations, but he's really handled it, you know, well, he hasn't been involved in anything bad and, um, you know, he's really handled himself well. So I just thought that was kind of another interesting caveat to the season yeah. so far. <laughs> yeah, that, that is an interesting caveat. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's just a tough situation, right? You know, leaving Barcelona has been for so long and then the turmoil we've ca- talked about, right. With the Leal and, and Fran- um, Ligue 1 football in general, you know, there's a lot of, uh, tough troubling financial situations if you're not psg to be honest yeah um, right. a lot of those clubs and just kind of the tv deals and all those you know the business aspects too right um and then not nonetheless like you said that the fan mayhem and a few of their matches being abandoned or you know postponed and things like that it's definitely troubling situations i'm not sure really what's going on again from that fan end but um yeah conrad's kind of stayed out of it you know grinding um you know working as hard as he can um, to really get on that that team sheet because you know, there are a few players there, right? Obviously, Pai is a, um, a staple, right? That's not going to be replaced. But there are a few other midfielders, um, I think, uh, um, you know, Pape Gai there, and then a few others that are kind of in that 22 to 24-year-old range, young, um, you know, talented, have a few years under their belt too, um, that he needs to really have a string of good games to, you know, leapfrog over in terms of, you know, getting more consistent starts. So um, again, a team that that's kind of struggling, you know, in and around, you know, some of the games, you know, pretty uh, strange disparity um, in terms of some of their success here with wins. And then uh, the Galatasaray result, obviously being on the other end of the spectrum. So uh, if he can be one of those focal points for consistency um, and get a good string, uh, string of games, like we've seen with Weston, right? Juventus, um, you know, the sky again is certainly the limit for him. I think he just needs that confidence uh, to get on the score sheet, um, have a few uh, more chances created there. Um, and again, just a young talent kind of first going off outside of Barcelona. So um, I think we'll see him back um, in the USMNT camp sooner than later. Um, and we'll see him on the score sheet, um, you know, consistently, I think, uh, before the end of the year here. Yeah, and and I really just like his skill set, right? Like he, he's a player who has a little bit of that flair that we look for, um, and he's also a player that just has really soft feet and and good technical ability, right? That's La Masia, uh, that's his raising, uh, you know, in him and in his game. So, yeah, I'm I'm excited for his future. Um, I know the the goals and assists have kind of dried up here a little bit. I know he got an assist this weekend, but right, right. Um, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited for his future and think he's on course, right? Like we wanted him to get playing time this year at the very least at Marseille. We didn't want to see him get frozen out and, you know, uh, have troubles, you know, getting those first team minutes. So he's doing that right now. And I think that's, that's really great and bright. So, uh, yeah, I think with that, Pat, we will now move over to, uh, our, you know, our favorite part of the show, right? And that's none other than Quick Kicks. All right, so here we are in quick kicks. I'm going to throw it to you, Pat, and uh, yeah, take it away. Yeah, let's do it. So to start, we're going to head over with Timo, our boy, Timo Weah, um, you know, over with Leo, where he played the final 14 minutes in a tough 1-1 draw against uh, Nant on uh, you know this past Saturday. And going over to Austria, we have Brandon Aronson, who started and played uh, 85 minutes in Salzburg's 1-0 loss to Lille. Uh, this week during the Champions League. And then over the weekend, uh, Aronson started again and played 61 minutes in, uh, again, Salzburg's 2-1 loss to uh, Austria Klagenfurt. And uh, Thomas Roberts actually also played in this game, played 13 minutes. So oh, wow. um, uh, an interesting appearance from him. Not the best run of form right now for for Salzburg and Aronson. They're really just not getting wins. So not good. That, that's surprising. That's surprising. Um and we're going to head over to, uh, you know, Switzerland there with Pifak, our boy. Uh, I haven't talked about it in a while, but he played the full 90 um, for the young boys in a tough 1-0 loss to Zurich there on, on Sunday. And I think both of Pifak's uh, goal-scoring chances there were blocked, so not really making the, the best impact right now. Yeah, the young boys there in Switzerland. <laughs> and uh, going over to Germany, we have Tyler Adams, who subbed on and played the final 17 minutes for Leipzig in their 3-1 loss to Leverkusen. Uh, kind of similar to Salzburg, you know, not not doing so hot right now. Um, you know, lost this weekend uh, versus Leverkusen. So, um, you know, again, they 
seem to keep climbing up the Bundesliga table uh, just to, to kind of fall back down, unfortunately. So hoping things things kind of get better there as the season goes on. So. If you want to age 50 years, watch um, Leipzig there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're heading over with Anthony Robinson, um, you know, one of our, our favorites here. He started and played the full 90. Um, with our boy Tim Ream, who put in a man of the match performance in a 1 1 draw against Preston North End. Yeah, and it sounded like uh, Damian Loss was on the bench too this weekend, so, um, or this week in their game. So, yeah, kind of cool right. to see, see him getting uh, some involvement there with the first team. That's really cool. And heading over to Italy, we have Gianluca Busio and Tanner Tessman. So, uh, Busio started and played 90 minutes, while uh, Tanner subbed on and played the final 19 minutes for Venezia in their 2 0 loss to Inter Milan. Tough, tough team to play. Um, yeah. But Mark McKenzie in Belgium talked a lot about our, our Belgium Yanks, right? Um, our Belgium boys. Um, you know, where, where Mark started and played the full 90 um, in this past midweeks Europa League game for Yank against Dynamo Zagreb there. Um, excuse me, where they drew. And then this past weekend for the league, he was an unused sub in their tough 3-2 loss against Bruges. So um, looks like things could be on the up and up. Um, the coach is in the hot seat. Um, so that might be positive for Mark in game time. Yeah. And uh, staying there in Belgium, we have Sam Vines, who started and played 90 minutes for Royal Antwerp in their 3-0 win over Usend. How, ah, how interesting. Usten, Usten. And Josh Sargent Austin. Um, you know, really kind of picking up some some solid performances there. I started at right wing for Norwich and a, a tough 0-0 draw against Wolves uh, this past Saturday. But um, he did play six, eight minutes and, and had a pretty decent game. But um, they're still in a troubling position. Yeah, and heading over to Germany, uh, we have Chris Richards, who subbed on and played the final 27 minutes for Hoffenheim. And that was in their uh, big 6-3 win over Greuther Firth. Uh, wow. So quite an interesting scoreline there uh, in Germany this weekend. Uh, poor Julian Green, man. Um, but uh, Christian Cappy, right? Um, you know, we'll head over to him. Uh, played the final six minutes for Bromby and a 1 0 win over uh, Perry Kitchen's old Randers. And staying in Denmark, we have Emmanuel Sabi, who uh, started and played 70 minutes for Odense Bold Club. And that's in their 2 0 win over Nordsjeland. So a team uh, that had Jonathan Amen, still has uh, Jonathan Amen, I guess. And uh, yeah. he's working on a recovery still coming back. Yeah, so. so. Love that guy. Um, but CCV, you know, one of our, our Scottish Yankees, um, you know, really performing well in Celtic. So started and played the full 90 and a solid win against Aberdeen, a 2-1 win. Yeah, and going back to Germany and back to a game we just talked about, uh, Timothy Tillman started and played 79 minutes and also scored a goal in that uh, Greuther Firth 6-3 loss to Hoffenheim. So Julian Green, not doing so hot there, but hey, Timothy Tillman starting and scoring goals. So Yeah, scored a goal there. And Luca De La Torre, um, the man that always seems to be in, in social media for, for one reason or another, um, starting and play the full 90. And Harry plays a tough 1-0 loss to Utrecht. And uh, going to a player we haven't talked about in a little bit while, a little bit of a while, and that's Mason Judge. So Mason uh, just joined 1860 Munich this week after his contract oh, nice. with Frankfurt expired this past spring so good to see him you know finally find a home there uh staying in germany so yeah good to see and uh, another name we haven't talked about in a while ben letterman um out of the woodworks it's great to see um started and played uh 74 minutes and uh you know got an assist there and rock house four nil win um so really great to see him back yeah and he's slowly doing you know a good job there in poland getting game time yeah. Uh, had a little bit of an injury for a period of time, but, uh, you know, came back strong and, yeah, getting minutes, which is good. And uh, going to Brazil, we have Johnny Cardoso, who started and played 45 minutes for Internacional in their 1-1 draw with Santos this weekend. Nice. Another player is awesome to see, um, you know, playing. And um, last but not least here with uh, uh, Eunice Musa in Spain, Austin. Um, so not getting the starts here, but he did uh, play the final eight minutes in a 1-1 draw. Um, for Valencia against Rayo Vallecano. So um, hopefully these string of performances where they're not getting results will propel him to the starting lineup. Yeah, yeah, very true. And uh, we love watching, you know, Eunice. So good to see him on the pitch. And uh, no, so we got one more player. Pat. Uh, we one have more, one more. Falaren Balagoon. So Falaren scored a hat-trick this week for Arsenal's U23s. 
And that was unfortunately in their 5-3 loss to Derby County's U23s. Uh, so this season, you know, Balagoon scored, uh, I believe it's 14 goals in, in 10 games. Really has been, uh, you know, on fire for their, their U23 team there, Arsenal's U23 team. So uh, we just need that man to get his opportunity in the first team again. And uh, like a yeah, YMCA he's really doing all he can. Austin. It's like a YMCA scrimmage. Yeah, honestly, he's he's scored, you know, I think two hat tricks this year, had another two goal game. So, yeah, yeah, he's really, really killing it. So, uh, yeah, that's all for our episode today, guys. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel down below. And don't forget Instagram, Twitter, all that social media content. There's so many games going on. Um, we have to keep you updated. So if you're not watching our videos, tuning into the podcast, check out our social media pages as well. That's right. We also have a merch uh, store online. So check the link below to, uh, you know, check that out. See some cool designs there. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, great filming with you today, Pat. Again, uh, you know, had a great week last week with a lot of fun matchups. Uh, got some games midweek, you know, this week as well and oh, over yeah. the weekend. So another uh, another fun one coming up. Yeah, another fun one for sure. And, and just to, again, you know, for these episodes here, we're going to try to get them out a little bit quicker, right, Austin? Just because there are so many games, the uh, Champions League, Europa League, Conference League, all the other, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, leagues that, you know, they're playing in their self aside from European competitions. So um, we want to get these videos out to you uh, quicker time, right? Um, you know, just, just to get them so it's not overlapping, you know, with some of the midweek games. So um, be on the lookout for this type of, uh, you know, format and content and, uh, you know, some of the live shows, right, Austin, moving forward. Yeah, yeah. We've actually talked about doing uh, our weekly reports as a live show. So we're targeting maybe a 7, 8 o'clock on a Monday night. Um, and we can, you know, obviously post something uh, also on social media about this and, and get some feedback. But yeah. uh, again, as you know, the games kind of rack up and um, you know, as we, as we look at the future uh, we think that that would be a cool kind of experience, get you guys integrated into what we do and uh, also ask some questions and, and kind of have some, you know, back and forth uh, on Monday nights. So yeah, that's just something we're exploring right now. So more to come on that. And uh, Monday yeah. night football, Monday night fo football, Austin. And, and uh, again, yeah, something you brought up, um, you know, the future is, is looking pretty bright. Um, you know, we're getting a string of performances here. Um, yeah, the, the U S, um, you know, really, uh, you know, putting Mexico in their place, you could say, right. Love to see that, um, the you know, all good vibes kind of head, heading into, um, you know, the December and the new year. So I think that'll really lead to, to just one thing here, Austin. And that is one day we will win the world cup.